Lola wanted to say hi. Say hello. Welcome back to practicing with me. Happy October. I accidentally planned spooky topics for the entire month. So we're gonna start out with none other than practicing Griffiths Griffiths's poem. It's originally for flute and orchestra, although there are arrangements for flute and piano, and even violin and pianos. 1922. Wow. How does this piece fit a spooky theme for the month? Well, let me tell you. Firstly, just the sound of the piece is so spooky and dark. It even made it onto Laurel Zucker's album, Dark Side of the Flute. Other spooky things about this, there's so many accidentals. So many double sharps. I don't want to talk about it. It's in C sharp minor. Then of course it modulates. That's why we get all these double sharps, because of modulating. And then at the end it kind of goes a little, a little crazy. So yeah, a nice piece to practice this month for spooky season. I've been uh, looking at this on and off for years and I think I'm finally gonna put it away today because I just can't. Can I help you? I caught her. And to top off all the spookiness, there's a lot of 16th notes too. There's some like wild 16th note runs in here. I'm going to play you the beginning so you can get a sense of its spookiness. switching from threes to fours to fives already in that first bit that I played you so just take your time trying to fit the rhythms in but what I really need to practice today is on the second page letter E to F I might play you from letter D and we'll see how far I get <laughs>
there. I always have trouble with this um, trill right here that I totally didn't play. But let's try practicing that phrase right before letter E. Spooky. <laughs> 
not much I can do about it because I have written in like A as the note name, so... So that's what I have here, I, like little notes to myself that it's okay to use the thumb B flat in this context and it'll help me. So that middle part took me so long to get. It was the first, it was the first thing I learned when I was learning this piece because that part is so fun. It's like that Celtic jig, it's got that Celtic jig to it, but still really like dark and twisted in a weird way. And boy, let me tell you, I was not expecting that many double sharps everywhere in that music, like, but there are so many double sharps in that passage. I think that's where the most double sharps are of the whole piece. Um, so it took me a really long time to get it. Unfortunately, it was just, it really was slow practice for me, but now all of a sudden I can pick up this piece like months 
later and still and my fingers still remember the notes that's a win for me <laughs> and then the last part is really fun it goes into 2-4 for a while and we get a lot of well actually it flip-flops from 2-4 to 6-8 but we get a lot of like chromatic motion a complete different theme it's like almost frenzy let me let me attempt to play it for you earlier when i was warming up and i was playing this like my articulation was not lining up with the notes so we'll see what it sounds like try doing your chromatic scale just to make sure your fingers are even. So I think I'm good. I don't know. You can come and tell me if I'm not good. That's step one. Down and up and back again. Why don't we try doing... You could do a group of four, it's articulation. And then why don't we go even shorter still and we'll do groups of two. groups like staccato detached from each other you can already hear i'm having trouble with groups of two so that might be something i decide to practice like with my scales and stuff now then then we can try to slur and two tongue scales come back they start on E going down to A and then later even from A going down to D sharp so you might also want to try these patterns with those in mind so room today and this may be the end of the line with this piece for me but it could be the start for you in this piece and like I said super fun super fun piece to put you in the right spirit for Halloween and spooky season I actually would like to go online and look for some program notes about this piece and I mean it just happened to come across uh, on my playlist earlier when I was listening to music and for the first time like an actual storyline with characters appeared in my head while I was listening to this music and maybe I've been maybe that's where it came from the stories I've been reading like I just finished Where the Crawdads Sing 
the character of this music does kind of make me feel like, I don't know, like some sort of chase around the forest. I don't know. I feel like that, you know, marsh setting from the, where the crawdads sing would be, I don't know, really appropriate for the character of this piece. Have fun. Go nuts. Go practice. Thank you for practicing with me today. I'll see you next week for more spooky content. Really scary next week. We're going to be talking about recorded accompaniment. Yeah, don't forget to like, like, subscribe, share, and comment. Uh, you can comment what you're going to be for Halloween this year. What do we say?